Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to integrate this rational function using the technique of partial fraction decomposition. With partial fraction decomposition, you start with one, in essence, one big fraction with something on top, some function, and some other one on the bottom. And while you're used to, say, adding things like some function that might have some x's involved, now we're going backwards. So rather than trying to find a common denominator for these and combining them into one fraction, we're doing the opposite, where we're splitting them up. So the first step is to factor the denominator. This denominator factors to x minus 2 times x minus 2. And the numerator stays the same as x minus 1. So in our denominator, we have repeated linear factors. That is, each of these x's has an exponent of 1, making it linear. And they're twinsies, so they're repeated. In this case, since we have two copies, for each copy, we need to have one fraction that we're adding. And if we had any other term, say an x out here, we'd also have a third fraction for that one. And now, under the first fraction, that is the first denominator, is just x minus 2. And the second one is x minus 2 quantity squared. In our numerators, you can go ahead and pop in some placeholders of a and b or any other letter you prefer. This is equivalent to x minus 1 equals a times x minus 2 plus b. If you are having trouble seeing what I did here, take a moment and multiply both sides by the common denominator of x minus 2 squared. Both of these terms will go away on this side. And on this side, you have to apply the distributive property of multiplication. When you multiply by the first term, only one of the x minus 2 um, factors will go away in the denominator, so you'll be left with 1. When you multiply x minus 2 squared, that is when you distribute it to the second part here with the b, this denominator matches this um, quantity that you're multiplying, so you can just cross them both out, and you'll be left with a b. Now continue to simplify. From this, we can clearly see that x, excuse me, x has to equal ax, and negative 1 has to equal negative 2a plus b. From this equation, a has to be 1. Now I can go ahead and pop this a into this a here. That is, I can make this a here equal to 1 and solve for b. Pause your video and try that. So a equals b equals 1. This tells me that x minus 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared. Let's use this fact in our integration process. So rewrite this as 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared dx. Now I'm going to skip the process for how to integrate these since I've already created videos on these separately. So if you want to see how to integrate this, look up here. You should be seeing a link pop up on your screen. Click on it, and it'll take you to a separate video that'll show you how to integrate integrals that look like this first term. If you don't know how to integrate this one, then there should be a second video popping up right now up here on the top corner of your screen that will show you how to integrate integrals that look like this, or evaluate integrals that look like this. If you can see right now how to do it, then don't worry about um, looking at those videos. Those are just extras in case you're not following along with how to evaluate those integrals. So this integrates to the natural log of x minus 2 minus 1 over x minus 2 plus quantity, uh, excuse me, plus a constant c. I hope this video was helpful.